In less than 24 hours, we will learn the Artemis II crew of four astronauts scheduled to fly around the moon next year. The first crewed mission of its kind in half a century, and one will be a Canadian. Picked from the country's pool of four active astronauts that work alongside NASA in Houston. The contenders are Joshua Kutrick from Alberta, a Canadian fighter pilot recruited by the Canadian Space Agency, Jeremy Hansen from Ontario, who became a pilot at age 17 and is the first Canadian in charge of training astronaut candidates at NASA, Jennifer Sidney Gibbons from Alberta, the youngest of the group, and a former lecturer at the University of Cambridge in the UK, and a familiar face, Quebec's David Saint-Jacques, who flew to the ISS in the longest Canadian space mission to date. Joining me now to talk about this upcoming announcement is retired Canadian astronaut Chris Hadfield, who's also a busy author lately. He's working on a new thriller, a Cold War thriller called The Defector. It's coming out later on this year. As if being an astronaut wasn't enough, Mr. Hadfield. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, yeah, I want to get right pleasure. to it. I want to get right to it. Tomorrow, uh, we're going to hear this announcement. You were involved in selecting these four names, and I don't think you're going to give me who you think is best, but let me ask you this. Um, what is NASA and what is the Canadian Space Agency looking for for this specific role? Uh, those those four names you just mentioned, those are some terrific Canadians, some some amazingly accomplished and driven and and hardworking uh, Canadian astronauts who have been serving the country for a long time. So I am just so excited that we're about to announce which one of them is going to go to the moon. I mean, it, uh, it, it's it's historic. No one has ever left Earth orbit except an American. What we're looking for, of course, is what those four astronauts have, and that is deep technical competence, a great ability to deal with problems and solve them and make things work, um, a real burning desire to work at this thing. It's going to take years of work, and they're going to have to take a tremendous risk to climb on board that enormous rocket ship that's only ever flown once in history and take that little spaceship all the way around the moon and back. And then uh, the last thing I think is a great ability to work during their entire life, uh, trusting their lives and having the skills to be trusted with other people's lives in close proximity for, for decades uh, as, as they get ready for a flight like this. So we've got the right people. Any of the four of them can do it. But tomorrow we're going to find out which one. It's such an exciting announcement because these astronauts will also travel faster than any humans ever have. Um, they'll also be going further from Earth than anyone. So what kind of training will this crew be doing in this mission to prepare for that? Uh, the the mission itself, uh, Farah, will be about 10 or 11 days long. And they're going to launch out of Florida. So a large part of their training, of course, is the launch vehicle and all the various things that go wrong during launch and how you can survive it, how you can do different things to, to overcome those problems. Then they're going to stay in Earth orbit for several days while they check everything out. They make sure all of the systems work, all of the, the complexities of navigation and all of the life support systems. You know, it's a brand new vehicle and someone needs to do the initial big test flight on it and then they're going to fire the great big engine that, as you say, will get them faster than anybody's ever gone before so that they can go all the way up to the moon. And it's as if we were throwing a stone so fast that it would go all the way to the moon and then get caught by the moon's gravity and whip around the other side and then fall 400,000 kilometers until it plummets back into the atmosphere. And they have to be able to operate the machine during all of that and, of course, coming back down through the atmosphere where the air slows them down. So it's it's a huge suite of skills and, and, and potential risks that they need to get ready for. Let's talk about settlement on the moon. Do you think we're going to see humans live on the moon in our lifetimes? Initially, someone has to take the risk to just show you can get there. But then your technology gets good enough that you can actually start staying longer and longer and really making that part of the whole human experience, the Earth-Moon economic system. So yeah, that's what's going on right now. The early steps towards not just exploration, but permanent human presence and settlement. And that's what this Canadian and, and their three American crewmates are, are signing up to do. So I can count that as a yes. In our lifetime, we think this could happen. <laughs> Yes. Well, it depends how, how long you're planning to live, Farah, but I'm sure <laughs> planning to live long enough to see it. Yeah, I th that's coming very fast. And of course, it's not just Canada, not just the United States.
but there are 77 countries that have space agencies. This is the start of a big international effort, and there'll be some competition in there. So yeah, it, that, that's another reason to answer your question, yes. Oh, sure is exciting. Thank you so much for your time and, of course, your insight. Retired Canadian astronaut Chris Hadfield.